Kingsman director Matthew Vaughn is back with a brand new film called Argyle, a slick spy thriller that has a lot of comedy, a lot of action, and a lot of runtime. Let's talk about it. Our Guile is an experience, one that I can't even begin to really talk about in any sort of spoiler-free fashion, but I'm going to do my best to not spoil anything. This is a PG-13 film. It's two hours and 19 minutes long. It's got a lot of action. It's got a lot of humor. It's got a lot of over-the-top effects that don't feel even remotely realistic. And it had me on board, and then it didn't, and then it kind of did again. And I'm all over the place with this, just like the movie is. Before I really dive into my thoughts on this movie, I would appreciate if you throw a subscribe my way as I post tons of movie reviews, commentary, roasts, live streams each and every week. Love to have you on board. All right, let's talk about this film. Henry Cavill plays Argyle, kind of, for a little while, at first. Because just like the trailer showcases, nothing is as it seems at first glance. What's really happening here is we're following the brilliant writing of Ellie Conway, played by Bryce Dallas Howard. Bryce Dallas Howard is the main protagonist. We're going to be spending a lot of time with her, and it's great time because she carries this film. I thought Bryce was fantastic here, as she typically is when she has some decent material to work with. Just a lovely performance, very fun, very chipper. I really appreciated what she brought to the table. And everybody else is doing a decent job too, especially Sam Rockwell as Agent Wild. Their chemistry, their rapport is very on point. I appreciate it every time they're on screen together. And of course, there's that uh, adorable CG cat. Doesn't look even remotely realistic most of the time, but uh, you know what? It doesn't really bring much to the table now that I think about it. It, it comes and goes, but there isn't a lot of really fun antics with the cat. It's not like Thing from the Addams Family. That guy puts in the work every time he's on scene, he's bringing something to the table. The cat just kind of meanders to and fro, occasionally getting in harm's way, but for the most part, a prop. Back to Sam Rockwell for a second. At first when we see him, he's got this really long hair and a kind of a goofy way of talking. I was 100% convinced that was Will Forte. I, I thought it was Will Forte the entire first 45 minutes of the film until he shaved and cut his hair. I was like, oh, oh, oh my God, that's been Sam Rockwell the whole time. I didn't really know much about this movie going in, to be fair to myself. I saw that one long trailer and that was about it. But it's Sam Rockwell and he's great. And uh, we also have Brian Cranston in this as the villain. He's decent. Brian Cranston always puts in 100%. But they don't give him a ton of great dialogue or a lot of fun scenes to play out in. So instead, he's just kind of there as Cranston. And being there as Cranston is enough, but we need to elevate him. Brian Cranston has earned that seat at the table. Let's give him a full plate to work with. I, I don't really know what that analogy was all about, but we're going to move past it. In the trailers, we see Henry Cavill. We see Dua Lipa. We see John Cena. There's a lot of actors in this movie for a little bit of time. If you came for Dua, well, you know, that's fair, but she's not gonna be in it very long. So you're gonna come once and then never again. So bottom line is we got a good cast, we got some fun characters, but what are they doing? What are we working with? Well, we are gonna be watching Ellie Conway as she struggles to come to grips with the fact that everything she's put into paper is somehow taking place. She can somehow see the future or she can type it out. Think Delirious with John Candy. Remember that movie that I just pulled out of my ass? That was, that was a thing. You can look it up if you don't know. I don't remember being very good. But uh, yeah. anyway, back, back to this. Conway's working on her final book in the Argyle series, but she has writer's block. She's unable to finish the last chapter. And before she can, all hell breaks loose. And next thing she knows, she's smack dab in the center of her own material on the run from this evil agency ran by Brian Cranston. She's getting help from other agents. There's tons of action now. It's insanely dumb, but insanely fun at the same time. And I will say at some points, I'm getting a bit of Long Kiss Goodnight vibes with Gina Davis. I prefer that movie a lot more over this, but I didn't mind this flick overall. I thought it was a fun time. I really enjoyed the action. I thought the comedy landed for the most part. I thought visually it was on point. Although Matthew Vaughn is kind of an inconsistent director with me. When I think of X-Men First Class or even the first two Kingsman films, 
there's just some of the shots are, it feels like the B team is maybe running the camera and he's not even there. He doesn't have time to get those shots. So he throws it to the other unit and they're just not that good. I don't know. He does a few little playful things that sometimes land and sometimes don't. And that's kind of how this movie is overall for me. I really love the Kingsman. I thought Kingsman 2 was okay. A big step down. Had a kind of spy kids vibe, which seemed a little bit more at odds with the first one. And this movie's kind of like both. The first half is Kingsman, second half is Kingsman 2. Goes way loony in the final act. And it's way long. This is a thing that I harped on a lot last year. I said I would calm down with it, but why should I? You know what? It's my opinion. I think movies are continuing to be too long. And again, there's brilliant movies that can absolutely be long and stay forever. I don't care. I'll watch a 10-hour cut of uh, Oppenheimer. That's fine. But something like this... I think a shorter runtime really helps it move along faster because that pace needs to keep going. Otherwise, we find ourselves slowing way down and it's just exposition dumps over and over again, which this does unfortunately have a lot of. Especially later on, there's just a lot of explaining things to both the audience and the character and that's not very interesting to watch. I will also say this. Argyle, Henry Cavill, the Dua Lipa thing... The John Cena character, these all would have made for a great movie by themselves without the little twist that we know about right away, the gimmick. So maybe we could spin off and just make an Argyle movie that's about the characters from the book. I would love to see that. Because Henry Cavill as James Bond was something people actually wanted to see, and I think we can do that without calling him James Bond in the future. Plus, I always like John Cena. He's up for anything. He's fun to watch, do things, and do a leap. I mean, forget about it, right? Forget about it. Okay, those are my thoughts on Argyle. Not a bad little flick. I do think some people will absolutely hate a movie like this. Some people will dig a movie like this more than I did. I really do appreciate Matthew Vaughn thinking outside the box as always. He goes for broke on his ideas. He doesn't care what other people have to say, and that's fantastic. It's just not going to work for some. Like, I don't think my wife is going to appreciate a film like this where things are a little bit too cartoonish. Others absolutely will. Okay, let me know your thoughts. Have you seen this? I wanted to get it out a couple days ago, but I went to Megacon. I was on a bunch of fun movie panels, and I'm just getting back now to review and catch up on the channel. Let me know. Please like the video if you had a good time. Again, I would love to have you subscribe and stick around the channel as I post tons of reviews, reactions, roasts, and everything movies every single week. It'd be great to have you here. All right, I think that was mostly painless. That's all I have for you. Hopefully, I see you next time. Take care.